This is the 50th anniversary kit, which was released as a limited edition, and it's really nice. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies, and I'm gonna be looking at this Italeri kit. This is the Range Rover uh, Series 1. So this is uh, being released for the, what's it, is it the 40th anniversary? Now the 50th anniversary, because it came out in 1970 and this particular Range Rover is a very iconic design. So this is the very, very first uh, car released in the Range Rover branding and it's been around, what was it? So 1970 and built all the way to 96, I think, in some kind of guise, but the overall shape of it never really changed. Now another interesting story is uh, when the Range Rovers were first released, the actual first um, uh, group to take delivery of them was actually the British SAS because they found uh, this would be a great vehicle for carrying all their gear. Also it looked like a civilian vehicle but it was a utili uh, utility at the same time. And so I think it's been a favourite of theirs as well. But let's have a look at the box. So here we go. Got the box art here. Very nice box art. Shows all the classical shapes. Very recognizable grill, overall shape of the cabin here as well. And then you've got the, the years, so 1970 to 2020. So this is when it was released, 50th anniversary version. Okay, so you can see the uh, official uh, licensing there as well. Okay, so you've got size of the boxes. You've got uh, the size of the overall kit. So it's gonna be 18 centimeters long. And then you've got some paint codes there as well. But let's have a close look inside and see what we get. Okay, so we've got a box, quite recent, recognizable bodies, all molded in white. Prefer white molded bodies because that allows you to paint it just about any color without much problem. Okay, so a reasonably thick box there with a lot of parts. All right, let's have a look at the bits as they come out. All right, so we've got a set of rubber tires. Okay, so they've got the really Pretty coarse tread on them. Let me see if we can do a bit of a zoom in on that. See how they're nicely molded, very off-roady type of tread. Now this side also has the Michelin molded into it, which you'll be able to see as I get the reflection going around. So they've done a really good job. Sometimes on rubber tires you get a very pronounced flash line across the center where the molds are joined, but these are really nice. Okay, so there you go, got four of those. And they're quite soft, solid. So you just gotta press the wheels into those a bit later. Okay, let's pop that over there. All right, we're gonna end up with this big bag of bits. All right, so I'm just gonna open up over here. All right, so we have some clear parts. They're going to be a bit hard to see. You can see how they're quite crisp, very well polished. You can see the reflections as I'm moving them around there. Okay, so I guess it is a pretty boxy shaped uh, four wheel drive. You've got your um, large windscreen here, you've got your rear windscreen, and you've got your side uh, glass. Lenses here for the headlights, and then you have your tail lights there as well. Okay, so they're the clear parts, and then we move on to the interior components. Okay, you've got the, the pressed wheels, you've got the spare here, steering wheel, disc brakes, this will be a rear parcel, parcel shelf, you've got the uh, driver and passenger seats, and then the rear seats as well. Okay, I might do a quick zoom. Okay, so we'll go back down here. All right, so you get your uh, spare wheel, you get your pressed wheels there. Some small axles and such. I imagine they're for the wheels themselves. They'll go through these holes which are in the disc brakes. There's your steering wheel, rear parcel shelf. You got the seats, so they've got some texture in them. They are hollowed on the other side. So I'm not too sure if they have any backings. From what I can tell, it probably doesn't. So if you want that to be a little bit more authentic, you probably want to either cap those off with a bit of plastic card um, or a bit of putty. Okay, and there's your rear seat. 
same sort of thing there so it's been hollowed out there okay all right from there we've got this larger sheet some of the finer details still in the interior actually there's the backings for the seats there okay so the front and back backing I guess with the rear one how it's hollow it doesn't really matter because you won't be able to see the back anyway there's a parcel shelf you've got the exhaust system what appears to be headrests you've got your dashboard you've got the windshield wipers rear axle so lower suspension components and drive system that's the uh, uh, fuel tank I would think and then a few other interior parts okay from there we have this bag so I've got the body and a few other bits and pieces in here okay so the body is actually resting on the floor pan okay let's have a closer look at this part so the floor pan is actually quite big I mean 24 scale it is a big car in comparison to other cars so most other things we'd only be up to about there okay so you've got some of the interior details so the rear cabin space okay so the rear seats here driver and passengers here and the uh, dashboard across there we've got some of the rail chassis so you've got two parts and then you have the interior trims okay you see the details across this side just see on the bottom of the floor pan there there is a little bit of engine detail but it's only the base so you get uh, the sump and a little bit of the gearbox okay and then we have the bodywork which i think should be considered the most important part okay so you can see the actual design of the filtered details on the inside very recognizable rear end opposite side with the the filler cap okay so you can remember the filler caps didn't actually have a cover and then the front end to accept the grill okay so I might as well do a close up on this have a closer look at all the fineness of the bodywork so I can get that focused there we go see how sharp these lines are let's cross the bottom here there's a fillet so this is a two door they did make four doors as well but the two door is probably more common going up to the front okay so the grill will sit in there you can see these chiseled lines for the bonnet and then across the side and then the back again there we go You've got the roof and the ridges in there as well okay so that's all the plastic parts so what we've got left is a sheet of decals okay so we'll take this off that's upside down so there's quite a variety of different registration numbers you can choose from you've got a 50th anniversary uh, decal there as well the very recognizable Range Rover which is on the, uh, the back section of the car dashboard interior parts okay and then we have the manual okay so the manual is actually quite big let's see if we can fit it all in there oh yeah okay so we've got multiple languages on the front gives a bit of a history on the uh the car itself and then we open up here we have the legend of all the parts so you can quickly check them off make sure all the parts are there and also so you can recognize where to find the parts as you're looking um during your assembly okay so we'll go to step one okay so step one is building up the uh, the chassis rail <coughs> got the exhaust and the, uh, the the diffs going into place over here it concentrates on the rear end with the suspension and the discs and then we've got the uh, the struts going in uh, on B then we've got that sub assembly of the chassis rail going onto the floor pan for the other accessories you've got the mud flaps uh, the fuel tank and bumpers finishes off with uh, your options here with either the english version or the european version and that's got to do with um, 
the steering linkage. So obviously you've got left hand drive or right hand drive. Okay, from there we've gone on to step two. This is uh, uh, putting the wheels and tires into place. So you can see there the rubber tire just has a wheel slipped over the top and then it's glued into place on the axles. Start on the interior. So there's a backing uh, for the seats for the front. Got the dashboard all going in together. Got the side panels of the interior and then you have the rear seats. Actually, there's a backing for the rear seat as well. So I mistook that for a, um, a parcel shelf. So that's a good thing. All right, so from there, let's move on to step three. Okay, so again, you've got the two versions, left-hand drive or right-hand drive. They just call it Axo-Saxon version for the British version, um, or there's a European version for left-hand drive. Um, we've got uh, the bodywork. So we've got certain holes that need to be opened up and they're particularly for the windshield wipers. So obviously left-hand drive or right-hand drive, the windshield wipers were on opposing sides. Okay, and then we've got, uh, oh, okay. So you can also have the, uh, the bodywork opened up so you can have it open or closed. So hence why it's got a, a semi-slit there. You can quite easily cut that open so you can open up the rear hatch. Okay, that's a nice touch. Okay, and as we head towards the finish line, we've got the glass getting fitted into the bodywork. So glass glue definitely helps with this, which is generally a, a white colored glue, which is a super clear wood glue or PVA. And then we have, again, all the fittings going to place. And this is mainly has to do with the, uh, the windshield wipers, make sure they're on the right way around. And then finishing off with the, uh, the fuel uh, cap and the lights and there you go there's the choices of the windshield wipers so with that it's pretty much it we end up with the decal listings here and then there's all the different options for different countries uh, registration plates okay so you've got uh, British German French uh, Italian Dutch uh, Belgian and what's E? I don't know Tell me what E means. And then this is a, a classic sort of British green color. But of course you can paint this in any of the uh, either authentic colors or you can paint it any color you like if you're making a custom type. So that's a really nice kit. So there we go. So that is uh, my open box review of the Italeri 124 scale Range Rover Series 1. This is the 50th anniversary kit which was released as a limited edition. Um, and it's really nice. So there you go. Thank you for watching.